Today's video is on gyro compass errors and limitations. Now I hope that you have seen my previous videos on gyro compass. I have given the links in the description section below. So make sure you watch those videos before you watch this video. Otherwise you will not be able to understand a lot of the terms uh, or explanation that I will be using uh, in explaining the gyro compass errors and limitations. Now, it's not easy to make a video on gyro compass errors and limitations because over a period of time, a lot of these errors are not applicable to the different makes and types of gyro compass. Especially these days, uh, the new gyro compasses that are fiber optic gyro compasses are not prone to some of these errors. But then still, uh, you may be sailing on ships uh, which have gyro compasses uh, which are prone to some of these errors so i thought i'll make a video on this uh, but again remember some of these errors uh, depends on the type of gyro compass that is there on board your ship so make sure that you find out the correct type i cannot cover all types here but i will generally explain how an error occurs in a gyro compass and uh, why you should be knowing about it all right so the gyro compass actually has uh, proved to be a reliable navigation aid over the past few decades. Uh, although the gyro compass has proved to be very precise and trouble-free substitute of the magnetic compass, it is still prone to some errors depending on the make and the model of the instrument. Now, there are some periodic and operational adjustments that a navigator on some model needs to make and mostly these are adjusting of the speed and latitude on the system to match the vessel's current parameter. Now I'll tell you why the speed and the latitude create an error. Uh, how does it impact the performance of a gyro compass? All right, so the adjustments that you make for the speed and the vessel's latitude is uh, all that is more or like needed these days to remove most of the errors in the gyro compass. Uh, some of these uh, gyro compasses these days, they receive direct inputs from a GPS or even a global navigation satellite system receiver. So like I said, some of them may not even then exist. Let me start with the latitude error. Now, as the, as the vessel uh, proceeds from the equator towards higher latitude, whether it's north or south, a gyro compass experiences certain forces. Now, like I said before, you should have seen my previous videos to know what is precession, how does precession affect the performance of a gyroscope. So I will not repeat all that again. But uh, as you know, probably the Coriolis force is minimum at the equator. It's almost zero at the equator and it increases as you go towards the poles. Right. So as the gyro compass as on the vessel, as the vessel starts to proceed towards higher latitudes from the equator, whether it's going north or going south, the Coriolis force also starts to become more. And the Coriolis force acting on the gyro compass also starts to increase. Now, because of the design of some of these gyroscopes, the settling position, in fact, is not in the true meridian, but slightly to the east or west of it. The amount of a latitude error, which is also sometimes called the damping error, is proportional to the tangent of the latitude. It can be calculated, tabulated and applied accordingly. It can also be artificially removed for steering purposes by simply shifting the lubber line by an appropriate amount. For this, you have to open up the system and you have to adjust the level line. Now, normally this should be done by a qualified gyro compass adjuster and not by the mariners. However, if you are sure about what you are doing, then you may go ahead and do so. But remember, any adjustments may lead to higher errors. So make sure when you adjust the level line, always seek a gyro error to ensure that your gyro has not incurred a higher error than what it was before. In some gyro compass, a ma manual or even an automatic input of latitude compensates for the error. I don't know if you have noticed or not, but in many ships, if you have been sailing on such a gyro compass, the master gyro compass is located on the bridge. It's located sometimes in a room and you have to go in there and you are allowed to input the latitude based on the latitude in which your ship is transiting, of course. The manual latitude setting does not have to be exact and it can be within 
up to 2 to 3 degrees of latitude. You must also ensure that if the gyro compass is able to take the input directly from a GPS or any similar receiver, the same is initialized to that effect. Now I have told you that as the vessel goes from equator to high latitudes, the Coriolis force starts to increase. Now the Coriolis force is like any other force. And if you have seen my previous videos on gyro compass, you will realize that if any force acts on the gyro compass, the gyro compass kind of precesses out of its not seeking element. And for that, you have to dampen the gyro. So we've talked about all that, the use of weights, or use of ballistics, mercury, oil, and over a period of time, torsional wires. And these days, of course, in fiber optic gyro compasses, we use the concept of optometry of light. Now, as the force starts to increase, you have to adjust the not seeking element of the gyro and the not settling element as well. All right, so whether it's a force of gravity, whether it's the Coriolis force, any force that acts on the gyro compass, the gyro compass's lubber line has to be adjusted accordingly. Now we move on to uh, the second error. The second error is called the rolling error. Now the gyro compass is made to settle in the required direction by various means that I talked about in my last video. It only compensates uh, for the motion of the earth, that is the rotation. It allows for it and then compensates for it because you cannot avoid the Coriolis force or the motion of the earth as the earth rotates from west to east. Uh, there is that motion that the gyro compass experiences. Otherwise, if you make a gyro compass point towards the particular object, it will keep pointing. But it's because the earth is rotating slowly. It rotates slowly, but still the effect is uh, felt by the gyro compass. It's a sensitive um, instrument. So as the earth rotates from west to east, the gyro compass, although pointing towards one direction, starts to precess out of its uh, the direction in which it is pointing. And because of which you have to adjust for it by the use of weights or sometimes ballistics and like I talked about before. If the ship also has motion along with the earth's motion, then this may affect the settling position of the gyro. As is evident, it is of little significance when the vessel is not rolling. Although the jimbled arrangement around the gyro are there to mitigate this error due to weather and other external effects causing sudden accelerations, one may have to be careful towards the reading the gyro reading and the input to the navigational devices. In these situations, it is best to keep comparing it with the magnetic compass and take an azimuth or amplitude or a compass error to verify the error and navigate with caution. Now, as the vessel is rolling, it's also called rolling, but also pitching will also have an effect and any other kind of vessel movements will have effect on the gyro's settling position. Then we move on to the third error, which is called the, lati the course latitude and uh, the speed error. Sometimes uh, in some books, it is also called steaming error. As you know, the gyro compass does not always point exactly to true north. Although we make it do so, it keeps uh, precessing out of its north seeking position. It is affected by changes in the course, latitude and speed. You know, if you think about now, you must be thinking how does speed because uh, remember, um, like I said before, even the Earth's motion, although it is so slow that you don't even feel it, the gyro compass feels it. Now, what happens is when the gyro compass, when the ship is moving in the same direction as the rotation of the Earth, that is from west to east, it experiences certain accelerations compared to when it is moving in the opposite direction of the rotation of the earth. That is from east to west. When the ship moves from east to west, it experiences different accelerations because the force is now acting in the opposite direction, the force of the earth moving because the earth moves from west to east. So if the ship moves along with it, it experiences certain accelerations. If it moves in the opposite direction of the earth's rotation, it experiences another acceleration. So that is why it is important that you understand how the Earth's movement, the latitude, the combination of the ship's speed, the rolling, the ship's movement, all these are forces that are acting on the gyro compass, which cannot keep it, so which prevents it from pointing in one true north direction. If the ship is heading east or west, there is no error as it is just added a bit more speed or less speed to the Earth's rotation for that instant. If on any other course, the gyro will settle in a direction which is the resultant of the ships and the Earth's motion. Because the Coriolis force, remember, it deflects to right in the northern hemisphere and it deflects to left in the southern hemisphere. 
and with any kind of deflection comes acceleration. So that acceleration is then another force that acts on the gyro compass. This particular error is introduced from this cause may be corrected by a screw adjustment when you are required to make the correct settings for latitude and speed. Here the compass feeds in the course component itself. In some of the older systems calibration tables were given to find the amount of the error which was then applied to courses and bearings. It was incorporated, it was allowed for and most of the modern sets these days will take the input directly from GPS to account for the error and automatically adjust the same. Once again, you must take care to ensure that such feed is initialized correctly for the speed and latitude inputs. So for that, it is essential that there is no additional error in the GPS. Now, uh, just giving you some additional information here, sometimes a, a cosine cam is mounted on the underside of the azimuth gear, which removes most of this error. Uh, any remaining error can then be minor or it can be even disregarded. Then finally, we have the residual error. This residual error is the error remaining after you have compensated for all kind of manual and automatic corrections. Residual error can be uh, summed up as the error remaining after any or all system errors have been accounted for and corrected. It is necessary to check the error of a gyro compass in the same way as you check the error and deviation of a magnetic compass. Uh, the most common and practical method that is used on ships is to compare exactly the ship's heading both by gyro and magnetic compass and at the same time proceed to obtain a gyro error by azimuth amplitude or transit bearing. And that is why if when your watch finishes and in the logbook you have to write down a, uh, an entry, you make an entry saying that you compared compasses and checked courses frequently. If the gyro, and you should be doing that as well, not making the entry only, you should be doing that as well. If the gyro is operating correctly, normally they say the error should not exceed more than 2 degrees and it is named high or low accordingly. High corresponds to a westerly error and low corresponds to an easterly error. For example, a gyro bearing of 1 to 2 degree where the true bearing was 1 to 3 degrees would indicate an error of 1 degree low. Conversely, if the error was 1 degree high, the helm or autopilot would have to steer 0.63 degrees, for example, by gyro to make good a course of 0.62 degrees true. Ensure that your gyro repeaters read the same as the master gyro before obtaining a gyro error. We now move on to limitations of a gyro compass. The limitations of the gyro compass are quite evident. It must be a free gyroscope to start with and so should get the constant high revolutions and power supply without any interruptions or spikes. Now, like I said before, in my previous videos, the olden day gyro compasses, they had a gyro motor and some of the ships may still be sailing with that. And that gyro motor has to attain a specific RPM. On an average, it is called about 30,000 RPM. Is it 30,000 RPM? And that 30,000, to attain that 30,000 RPM for the gyro motor, it used to take about three to four hours. And that was called the settling time of the gyro. So if you switched off your gyro or even the gyro switches off for a few minutes or a few, uh, just for a few moments, and you have to switch it on. It could be because of a power failure or maybe you are sailing out from a dry dock. It used to take three to four hours of the gyro for the gyro motor to reach that maximum and specific RPM at which it can then be made to point in a specific direction. It's just like a spinning top. All right. So it the gyro needed uh, power supply and it needed power supply without any interruptions or spikes in the power. Even a moment's break, like I said, used to render it useless till it was allowed to settle again. Then there were a lot of complex arrangements of electronic circuitry, processors, etc. Given that so many of the external factors need to be satisfied, it is not difficult to understand why after nearly a century of the gyro compass use, we still have to legally maintain a fully compensated magnetic compass with natural permanent magnets. Having said that, we must also appreciate the ruggedness of the gyro compass as many manufacturers claim a very impressive mean time between failures, sometimes as high as thousands of hours. Now, for example, I'll tell you one thing that over a period of time as the fiber optic gyro compasses have been introduced and if your ships are sailing or using fiber optic gyro compasses, these gyro compasses have very low settling time. It's only 15 to 20 minutes. So all that time has been reduced provided that your ship is using fiber optic gyro compass. I'll talk about gyro repeaters also briefly before I finish up this video. The vessels heading by a gyro 
and bearings may be needed in several different places aboard. Instead of having multiple gyro compasses on board, a single master gyro is connected up with the gyro repeaters through the transmission unit, which, which can provide for all the needs of the vessel. These repeaters can be mounted in the most convenient locations at the best angles for viewing at the conning station. Bridge wings and steering gear compartment. Now, if you think about it, think about the SOLAS requirements for the gyro compass bearing repeater and you will realize that uh, it says that all ships over 500 gross tonnage shall have a gyro repeater and the vessel should be able to take bearings over 360 degrees. Ships which are less than 1600 gross tonnage may be fitted by such means as far as possible. Repeaters may be designed specifically for steering or for taking bearings. Most incorporate a type of electric servo motor that follows the card of the master gyro as the course changes. The vessel's heading information is also required for various other equipment in the wheelhouse, such as the steering, the radars, ARPAs, uh, EGDIS, uh, course recorders, autopilots, AIS, VDR. And I hope I'm not missing any other instruments. All these instruments are also connected to the transmission unit, just like the gyro bearing repeaters. The gyro repeaters have to be synchronized with the master gyro. This is best done with the vessel stationary or alongside a wharf. Gyro repeaters are provided with means of illumination for use in hours of darkness. Any bearings taken from a gyro repeater must be first corrected for gyro error, either high or low as the case may be.